So if Benjamin Graham's method was working well, why did Warren Buffett switch the strategy? And to answer that, actually, we can look at some of the hints and clues that Warren Buffett have actually explained in the past. And one of them I'd like to point you to is the interview in Business Week at the year of 1999. So there was this report in July 5th, 1999 issue uh, where the, one of the journalists got a chance to talk to Warren Buffett uh, while he was on a trip to Europe. And in this article, we were able to find one of the main reasons why Warren Buffett had to switch his strategy from using Benjamin Graham approach to a strategy that's more similar to Philip Fisher. I'd like to highlight to you these two paragraphs, especially he mentioned on the size of the stock portfolio. So he was saying, if I was running $1 million today, or $10 million for that matter, I'll be fully invested. Anyone who says that size does not hurt investment performance is selling. The highest rates of return I've ever achieved were in the 1950s. I killed the Dow, you ought to see the numbers, but I was investing peanuts then. It's a huge structural advantage not to have a lot of money. I think I could make you 50% a year on $1 million. No, I know I could. I guarantee that. The universe I can play in, i.e. small companies, has become more attractive than the universe I can play in, that of large companies. I have to look for elephants. It may be that the elephants are not as attractive as the mosquitoes, but that is the universe I must live in. So Warren Buffett was actually saying that um, he used to buy small companies based on Benjamin Graham's method, but because he was so successful in delivering the returns, which he mentioned he could do a 50% return on a year if he had much lesser capital. So for now, with his large capital, he has to look for the big companies, or he termed them as elephants. And if you are still not convinced, um, I found this video on YouTube where Warren Buffett was actually addressing a question from the audience on investing with small sums of capital. Even in this era, let's say he has lesser, much, much lesser capital than he has today, how would he invest? Would he invest the same way he does or he would have do it, done it differently? I'll reiterate three points. Point number one, he said that if I were working with small sum, I certainly would be much more inclined to look among what you might call the classic Graham stocks. So he was saying if he has less money, he would have used a Benjamin Graham approach when it comes to stock selection. And his point too, he said, I would be doing far better percentage wise if I am working with small sums. There are just way too many opportunities. This means that as a small investor, when you use the Graham approach, you will be able to uncover a lot more opportunities than the bigger players can invest in. Usually these small companies will give you a better percentage return. So as a retail investor, the advantage lies in picking these small companies and not the big ones. And point number three, he said, I bought a large number of stocks in small amounts in companies whose names I couldn't pronounce. But the stocks as a group were so cheap, you have to make money out of it. It was Graham's kind of stock. In this point, he illustrated that it is important to diversify when you use the Benjamin Graham's approach. And it doesn't really matter what the businesses or the companies do because he even mentioned that the names he can't even pronounce, but yet he was willing and able to invest in them. Of all the stocks you have picked, some will be winners, some will be losers. But as a group, it's more important that you make money. There are many wise quotes that Warren Buffett have. And one of the most famous one is this. He said this, it's far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. So in this sentence, he is actually comparing uh, Benjamin Graham's approach to Philip Fisher's. The first part of this quote, buy a wonderful company at a fair price. This is essentially Philip Fisher's thinking. And later part of the quote, a fair company at a wonderful price. This is classic Graham. And because it is Warren Buffett, the best investor in the world, most people believe that buying wonderful company at a fair price is the way to go. And this results in many people chasing earnings and buying uh, companies according to the Philip Fisher's philosophy. Not understanding the context that actually the small retail investor has a much more advantage buying fair companies at wonderful prices as we have established previously. Uh, even Warren Buffett admit that. And it is because, given his size of his capital, he has no choice but to look for bigger companies. And it worked well for him also because he has the ability to really find uh, companies and able to project 
the economic mode or competitive advantage over the next decade or two in advance. And that is a skill that not a lot of people have. To understand how Berkshire Hathaway identify investment opportunities, I think the best way is not to read books on Warren Buffett because Warren Buffett has never written any books about himself. One of the best sources to understand, of course, is the Berkshire Hathaway shareholders letter. And the other one that I find which is quite telling was Charlie Munger's commencement speech to University of South California. You can just do a search online and you, you should be able to find a transcript of that speech. I just took out the excerpt from this speech as you can see here, in addressing the pool of graduates, he said that not all the wisdom of the world is to be found in one little academic department. And he said, in order to really understand the world, you need to have 80 or 90 important models. And for Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett, he was saying at a figure of about 120 mental models. And this each mental model is actually a very big uh, idea from each uh, academic field. So for example, when they analyze a company, whether they can invest, they will actually apply major principles from many, many fields. For example, uh, physics, chemistry, geography, philosophy, psychology, economics mathematics and many many more if these independent fields all point out to say that this company is good in some ways and there's enough evidence that these models arrive to a very positive note about this company then they would invest so you can see there are a lot of work to even accumulate that kind of knowledge to able to do a very well-rounded analysis of companies and I don't think most people are able to spend their whole day reading and reading and reading and applying all this knowledge in analyzing companies. It's very, very tedious and you must really have that appetite to learn and able to stay awake during all this reading. What is more easier, of course, is to stick to Benjamin Graham. That's the point that we have been emphasizing ever since. And Walter Schloss, being the one of the staunch followers of Benjamin Graham, had achieved 15.3% per year for 45 years and all he did was investing in low price to book stocks and these stocks are essentially the Ashton kind of stocks that we have established earlier and the reason why he preferred to use the net asset value as a key valuation tool was this and he said try to buy assets at a discount than to buy earnings earnings can change dramatically in a short time usually assets change slowly one has to know how much more about a company if one buys earnings. So all in all, we have to understand what our situation is. The more capital we have, the more effort that we're willing to spend. I would think that most of us as retail investors, we cannot invest like Warren Buffett and we should not because what is true for them may not be true for us. The quote that he said that it's far better to buy a wonderful company at fair prices it works for Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. But for us, our focus will be we buy fair companies at wonderful prices.